Hello everybody and welcome to this A-level chemistry exam question walkthrough where we're taking a look at organic nomenclature. Have a go at the questions yourselves by downloading them from the description and then watch the video and see how you got on. Here we're being asked what the IUPAC name is for this compound. To work out the name, we need to first look at what the longest carbon chain is in the substance. It's a chain of five, so that makes this pentane. We can't rule anything out yet, they're all pentane. So we look at the branches. We have got two methyl groups sticking out of this molecule. So this is going to be called dimethyl pentane. What position are these methyl groups in? Well, they're both on the second carbon from the right. And since we need to keep the numbers as small as possible, we will be numbering from the right. So this is going to be 2,2-dimethyl pentane. That means that A and D are wrong because you need a number for every single branch. So they only have one number two for the dimethyl. So A and D are wrong. Then we need to look at our final branch, which is a fluorine atom sticking out of carbon number three. So this is going to be three fluoro. And to decide between B and C, we just need to sort out our alphabetical order. We have a fluoro group and a methyl group. And so F comes before M in the alphabet. And so that, that means that C has to be correct because it's got the three fluoro before the methyl. Now, you might be thinking, what about the di? Prefixes such as di or tri, they don't get included in the decisions about the alphabetical order. So, F before N. This question is asking us which of these compounds has the lowest relative molecular mass. And we've been given four chemical names, so we need to work out what the formulae is for each of these compounds and see which one has the lowest MR. Ethanoic acid is a carboxylic acid, so it's got the COOH as its functional group. It's F though, so it needs another carbon atom to give us a total of this, and the MR of that, when we add it all up, gets to 60. One fluoropropane is like propane, so a chain of three carbon atoms, but one of the hydrogen atoms has been substituted for fluorine, and so it looks like this, with an MR when we add it up of 62. So this is wrong because it's bigger than A. Nitriles have got the C to N triple bond functional group. It's propane nitrile, so we need to have a total of three carbon atoms. And so this will be the structure and it will have an MR of 55, which is lower than ethanoic acid. So A is now wrong. Finally, propyl amine. Well, the amine functional group is NH2 and it's propyl, which means we've got a chain of three sticking out from that amine group. So it looks like this. When you work out its MR, it comes out at 59, which is higher than 55. So C is the correct answer. This question is asking us which compound is a structural isomer of z but 2 ene now, structural isomers have got the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula. So, in other words, a different sequence, a different arrangement of these atoms. So, the first thing that we need to look at is what actually is the molecular formula of but2ene. Now, the Z and the 2, they don't actually affect the molecular formula. So, but means 4, and it's an alkene, so it will have 8 hydrogens. Structural isomers come in three different varieties. There's chain, there's position, and there's functional group. So those are the three that we need to be on the lookout for. Butane is but, so four. It's an alkane, so actually it's going to have 10 hydrogens. So A is wrong because it doesn't have the same molecular formula. B is for E but 2 ene. Now that is similar to Z but 2 ene. It is an isomer but it is a stereoisomer. So that's where you've got the same molecular and structural formula, but a different spatial arrangement. So E and Z obviously is EZ isomerism. So B is also wrong. Cyclobutane, well, but is four again, but this time it's in a ring, hence the cyclo prefix. And then each of the four carbon atoms in the ring has got two more bonds to have, and those are go to hydrogen atoms. So that means it is C4H8. And this is the correct answer. It is a functional group isomer. 
that's something to keep on the lookout for. Cyclic alkanes and alkenes are functional group isomers. And so D is obviously the wrong answer, but the reason it's wrong is it's but2ene already, and there's a methyl group attached, so it has got a much bigger mass and it's a different formula altogether. Here we're being asked for the correct name of the alkene monomer which would form the polymer that's shown here. Now when you polymerize an alkene, you need to remember that there are some key steps. First of all, the double bond in the alkene breaks open and becomes a single bond, and the two carbon atoms that had the double bond grow into these trailing bonds. That's where the chain lengthens, and that's when we put the brackets and the N around it. So here we have to work backwards. So we have to undo those changes that I've just described. So we get rid of the brackets, we get rid of the N, we get rid of the trailing bonds, and the single bond in the middle becomes a double. And so now we know what the alkene would look like, we need to work out what its name is. So we, we need to find out what the longest chain length is. That's the first thing that we have to do. Now this is a very wonky chain, but actually it is a chain of five. And so that means that this is going to be pentene. And so we can rule out A because A has got propene as our alkene. And then we need to look at the branching. We only have one branch and that's this methyl group on the top left. We need to keep our numbers as small as possible, so the alkene is in position number two, because that's this carbon's position here, and the methyl group is in the same position. So it is going to be 2-methyl pent-2-ene. So B is the correct answer. In this question, we're being asked for the correct systematic name for the following compound, which I've shown here. Now, the way that this compound has been shown is a little bit confusing because of this CH3-2 region of the structural formula. What that means is that this carbon here has got two CH3 groups sticking out from it, as well as this hydrogen and the connection to this carbon atom. And so my first recommendation is that we actually get rid of that brackets in the two and we draw a bond to the two now separated methyl groups like so. This now enables us to see more clearly what the longest length of the chain is in this molecule, because actually it's quite a long chain. If we start along the bottom with this one CH3 group now, and we go left to right, that's two, three, four. If we went straight along, that would be a chain of five. However, when we go up to here and along to here, we can see that we've actually got a continuous chain of six carbon atoms. And that means that this molecule is going to be called hex something. And we can see that there's a double bond here, so it's going to be hexene. The carbon atoms are one, two, three, so it's going to be hex threeene. This hasn't helped us yet. And then we can see that we've got two methyl groups, one here and one here, and then a third one here. And so this is going to be called trimethyl hex threeene. And then because we're numbering from either end, we need to pick the end which keeps the numbers the smallest, which is the left-hand side. So this is carbon number one, carbon number two, number three, number four. And so we've got two, three, four trimethyl hex threeene as our structure, and C, therefore, is the correct answer. This question is asking us for the correct systematic name for the following compound. And the first thing that we must do is work out what the longest carbon chain is. And we could easily be tempted to just go straight across the middle like this and count five. And that's why we've got two options of pent across the middle. However, if we work our way left to right and we get to here, we actually go upwards and then right again. And that gives us a chain of three, four, five, six. And six carbons is hex, and so our answer is going to have hex in it somewhere. And in fact, D can be the only answer because it's the only one that's got hex as part of its name. We've got pent and pent, and we know they're wrong because there's a longer chain than five, and there's definitely a longer chain than four. So D is the correct answer, but let's finish the naming. We've got a chain of six, and we've got an alkene in the middle, so it's going to be hexene. 
the numbering is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And the reason that that's the case is that this is a symmetrical molecule. There's a methyl group here on the third carbon if we number from the right, or on the third carbon if we number from the left. So it doesn't matter which we choose. So this is going to be hex-3-ene, and we've got the methyl group on position number three and position number four, so it's going to be 3,4-dimethyl-hex-3-ene. Here we're being asked which one of the following is the correct name for this compound. And so the first thing that we need to do is look for the longest carbon chain. If we go straight across the top, we get the wrong answer, but that's the, the trick that they're trying to get you to fall into here. There's four carbons in that row, and that would be butte, but actually, if you start at the top right, and you work your way towards the left, and then you go down, and then you go right again, we've actually hit five carbon atoms in the chain. So this is going to be pent. Then we need to look for the double bond's position. If we number from the right-hand side, we hit carbon number two. So this is going to be pent two ene. If we numbered from the other end, the numbers would be three, and that would be too high. And so we always try and keep the numbers as small as possible. And so this is going to be pent 2-ene. There's a bromine group, so that becomes bromo. And so this is going to be 2-bromo pent 2-ene. And then we've got a methyl group on position 3. So this will be 2-bromo 3-methyl pent 2-ene. And so A is the correct answer. Okay, that's the end of this video. Hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.